In this episode of Exeter Outdoors, we speak with the Marine Mammal Rescue Team from the Seacoast Science Center to learn more about the visit of a special marine mammal to downtown Exeter. Reports started surfacing on social media over the weekend that a certain furry animal had been spotted in Swayze Parkway. The reports were confirmed by a local rescue team which was monitoring the situation. We went down on Monday morning to see for ourselves and tried not to disturb the seal who was taking a nice little nap on the riverbank when we arrived. On Tuesday, we hopped on a Zoom call to speak with Ashley Stokes the Director of Marine Mammal Rescue at the Seaco Science Center to learn more about the situation. It's been in and out of the water, which we expect a seal to do. Um, it's also been observed eating fish on its own, which is a great sign. Uh, when it has passed fecal, it has looked normal. Uh, but a lot of people, especially for anybody watching this, if you've seen that animal, it does have a wound across its lower chest. Um, so that's something we want to keep an eye on. When it's out in totally uh, salt water, salt water is a great healer. Um, so unless that wound is really deep or really infected, there's a good chance it can heal on its own. So unless it has something else going on, you know, we want these animals to stay out in the wild. It's the best spot for them. This wasn't Exeter's first seal sighting. The Exeter Historical Society was able to find in their archives a newspaper article from February of 2006. The article describes the sighting of a young harp seal migrating south from Canada that stopped by Exeter for a quick rest. Ashley Stoke explains that while there are more sightings near the beaches, seal swimming inland isn't out of the ordinary. It's a lot easier, especially for the younger seals, to haul out on than kind of the rocky outcroppings. But also that's where the majority of the people are recreating. Uh, so for those two reasons, those are those are our busiest spots. That's not to say that they're not also hauling out on the rocky areas or the marshy areas. Uh, we do get calls there as well. They're just not quite as frequent because, you know, we rely on the public to call these animals into us. Um, but then, you know, there are those times when we get animals that are a little bit wayward, such as this particular animal in Exeter. Uh, this animal marks our first animal ever in Exeter since our program started in 2014. Um, but, you know, you might suspect that seals are going to go where the fish are. When these animals find themselves in trouble, that's where the Marine Mammal Rescue Team comes into play. And we're just a small part of what the Seaco Science Center as a whole does for the community. Um, so the Marine Mammal Rescue Team responds to all reports of live and dead marine mammals. Um, so you may wonder, well, what animals does that encompass? Um, that covers whales, dolphins, seals, and porpoises. Uh, but with that being said, seals are about 95% of our caseload every year. Um, it's completely normal for them to be on shore, so they're more likely to be seen than a whale, a dolphin, or a porpoise is. It's really important for the public to give these animals space, let them be wild animals, but report them to our 24-hour hotline so that we can send a trained responder out uh, for the live animals to get a health assessment and see how that animal is doing. Um, but also for the deceased animals, they're just as important. If they're they're newly deceased, we can get them into the lab and do a full post-mortem exam, um, just like you would a human autopsy. Uh, but for animals, it's actually called a necropsy. Uh, but then for the animals that are even more decomposed, we still collect data on them, such as measurements, um, sex, species, location, uh, those sorts of things. So that's all equally as, as important as well. All marine mammals are federally protected by the Marine Mammal Protection Act, uh, which basi basically states that people need to stay 150 feet away at minimum. Uh, that's tough in the case of this Exeter animal, but luckily there is a fence there everywhere the animal's been hauling out uh, to help the public naturally stay away. Uh, but that's the most important thing is just to keep a distance. If they can get a photo of the animal and then also call it into the hotline, that's really important. Uh, sometimes, you know, not so much with this particular animal, but sometimes on busy beaches, People will see someone walking by and happen to see them on their phone and just assume that they're reporting the animal, but that's not always the case. Um, and we do rely on the public. So calling it in is really important, um, keeping away. And then you know, sometimes we'll say, can you guys get a photo or 
help us keep people away until we can arrive. That's really helpful as well. We're a very small staff. We rely very heavily on volunteers. Um, so we're very thankful for volunteers as well, but they all go through a training every other year uh, to maintain active status. Um, so they're, they're up to date on how we take you know, the measurements and how we do health assessments in the field without touching the animal unless we have to. Uh, so usually with a live animal or always with a live animal, we start with monitoring. Uh, so th these animals, because they're wild animals, are great at masking how they're feeling, uh, especially if there's a threat such as a human or a dog nearby. Uh, they're going to stand their ground. They're going to let you know, you know, I'm a wild animal, stay away, even if they're not feeling great. Uh, so we always have our volunteers start with monitoring from a distance before the animal even sees you uh, to gauge how they are. And then we take a host of photos, uh, videos, things like location, what's the tide cycle like, where is the animal in relation to the water, uh, things of that nature. And then we monitor the live animal over time. There's a few things that people can do. Um, one is follow us on Facebook. Uh, we post all of our you know, especially the interesting cases. Um, I try not to post the really uh, decomposed animals as far as dead animals, but all of the live responses are always posted, uh, things of that nature. So um, SSC Marine Mammal Rescue is our Facebook page. Um, if people want to keep up to date, especially with this particular animal, we'll post updates on there as well. Um, but you can also visit our Science Center page which has all information about the Seco Science Center, times that we're open, when you can visit, um, but also details about all of the different species we respond to for marine mammal rescue. Uh, but then also come and visit us. We're in Odeorn State Park in Rye, New Hampshire. Uh, right now we're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, but we're open 10 to five all of the other days. Um, and it's, you know, it's a great spot, especially for children. We have a lot of aquarium exhibits, um, information on marine mammal rescue. And then on our website, we have you know, interesting events coming up. We do some seal walks down in Salisbury Reservation in Massachusetts uh, near a big local haul out for seals. Um, so you can find all of those dates and information on our website as well. The following day after our interview, the marine mammal rescue team in Swayze made the decision to collect the young female harbor seal. Unfortunately, the wound on the seal's stomach started getting worse each time the animal hauled itself out of the water to rest. In addition to her wound, she had begun sneezing and had nasal discharge, both evidence of a respiratory infection. Her morning nap was the perfect opportunity for the team to collect her. After a full exam and triage care, she was transported to a rehabilitation facility, the National Marine Life Center, for further care. The folks at the Seco Science Center want to thank the public for their cooperation and assistance by keeping the team informed about sightings. The work of the Marine Mammal Rescue Team is funded almost entirely by donations and has help from local volunteers. If you're interested in learning more about the organization, you can visit their website at secosciencecenter.org.